Hey drivers, YouTube's a DOT physical expert, Dr. Nussi, back again with another video. And in this one, I'm going to answer the question, how difficult is it actually to pass the DOT physical, the Department of Transportation physical? If you have a CDL or you drive a commercial vehicle for a living, you're going to need to pass the DOT, the DOT physical, sometimes called the CDL physical. You're going to need to pass this medical exam in order to continue to drive. But how difficult is it actually to pass this medical exam? That's the question I'm going to answer next. Okay, so we're going to talk all about how difficult it is to pass this exam, the DOT physical. And at the end of this video, I'm actually going to give you the percentage. I've done a calculation of all of the driver physicals that I've done over the past year. And I'm going to give you the percentage at the end of this video of the drivers I've passed versus that I have not passed. So let me answer the question straight away. Um, in my opinion, it is not very difficult to pass the DOT physical. It is a very straightforward exam. Now that does not guarantee, that does not mean anybody out there, you can just walk in to a DOT physical and you just breeze right through it. There are certain medical conditions that you're gonna to wanna to be concerned with. I'm gonna go over those in this video. But in my opinion, and you'll see that in the percentages that I give you here in just a little bit, it's not that difficult to pass this exam. All right, so before I go over each individual condition that you should be a little bit concerned with or you might want to be a little bit concerned with, let me just go over the basic exam, at least how I do it, so you have an idea of what you might expect when you go in to get your DOT physical done. And I've done a complete video uh, showing you what the DOT physical looks like, at least when I do it. And I've done video on videos on each of these conditions individually as well, so I won't link all of those videos, um, but check out some of those other videos on my channel. Um, if you want refreshers on specifics that I'm going to go over in this video. All right, so when you go in to get your DOT physical done, you're going to fill out paperwork, obviously. And then when you first meet the doctor, the doctor, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to ask you questions about anything you checked yes on in your intake paperwork. So let's just say, and there's a whole bunch of check yes or check no answers that you'll be answering in your paperwork. Let's just say you checked that you had high blood pressure, and that you have asthma and that you occasionally drink alcohol. We're gonna be asking you things like, what medication do you take for your blood pressure? Or do you take any medication for your asthma? Or how many drinks per week do you have? We're gonna to want to get some of this information to see if we're gonna to need to check that out further during the exam. So once we get past all of that, we're gonna get kind of basic vital information on you. We're gonna take your blood pressure. We're gonna be talking about blood pressure here in just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna get your height. We're gonna get your weight, you know, just basic stuff like that. And then again, what I will do is I will immediately listen uh, with my stethoscope to you breathe and I will listen to your heart and then after, right after that, what I do is I will check your vision. And there's a couple different ways we check vision. Again, I've done a complete vision video. Uh, then I will check your hearing after that. And then I'm going to do kind of a brief kind of orthopedic evaluation, um, reflexes, strength, just making sure everything kind of works correctly in your extremities. And then I'm going to check your abdomen. I'll palpate your abdomen. And, and that's basically it. We go through a urinalysis to just make sure the urinalysis is okay. Again, we're checking for things like diabetes and blood in your urine. And that's basically what we do during the DOT physical. Again, at least how I do it. So basically the purpose of the DOT physical is not to disqualify everyone that comes in that has any kind of medical condition or that we feel is not at optimal health. What we are trying to do, our job, and again, I've reiter I'm reiterating this, so if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know this can maybe seem a little bit redundant, but what a medical examiner is trying to do is make sure that it's safe for you to be on the road, that you're not going to crash this large vehicle and cause a catastrophic incident, which could take lives, cost hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in damage. I use the example because I'm in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. A uh, tractor trailer, a truck uh, flipped over on one of our bridges, the main bridges that connects Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, blew up the bridge, and we were without a bridge for over a year. Um, you know, everybody was rerouted, and I'm not saying that that was a medical condition. I don't know why that happened, but they're trying to prevent these kind of catastrophic events. So we're going to be looking for things that would either cause you not to be able to operate a vehicle safely. So things like you've got to have good vision, obviously. You've got to be able to hear, 
obviously. You've got to have good um, mobility and dexterity in your upper extremities and your lower extremities. You've got to be able to get in and out of the cab, things like that. So you've got to be able to operate the vehicle safely. We have to be able to feel that you're going to be able to operate the vehicle safely. And then uh, number two, you've, you can't be at any risk for having an incident where you're going to pass out or become incapacitated while driving. So we're going to be looking for things, again, um, diabetes, uh, if you've had any incidents, and I'm going to be talking about diabetes here just in a little bit, but if you've had incidents where you've become incapacitated because of diabetes or uh, because of any other reason, if we think that you're at risk for passing out unexpectedly, then we're probably not going to be able to pass you. Other than that, even if your health isn't optimal, generally you're going to be able to complete the DOT physical and get your medical card. Okay, so now let's go through a couple of the few of the medical conditions that you're going to maybe want to pay a little bit of attention to if it applies to you when you go in to get your DOT physical, because some of these unfortunately can be disqualifying if you have some of these conditions. Now, this isn't going to cover every single condition, but these are the big ones, at least in my opinion, my experience. All right, and number one on this list is diabetes, and it's not disqualifying if you have diabetes. Your diabetes just needs to be under control. If you have, especially type 2 diabetes, if you have diabetes that you manage not with insulin, as long as it's under control, and again, we don't think it, that you're at any risk to either become incapacitated or to lose things because diabetes can make it more difficult for you to use your hands and your feet or it can affect your vision. As long as we don't think that those things are in decline, you're going to be okay. Now, diabetes that is treated with insulin is completely different. A year or so ago, they just changed the rule on this Insulin dependent diabetes, if you used insulin for your diabetes, it was an automatic disqualification. There was absolutely nothing the medical examiner could do to pass you to give your medical card. It was a disqualifier. Now it is not. They've loosened the restrictions just a little bit, but you do have to jump through some hoops if you are taking insulin and you do want to drive commercially. So what you're going to do is we're going to give you a form or you're going to just download the form and you're going to take it to your prescribing doctor the insulin dependent diabetic form and they're going to fill it out and they're going to basically state that your diabetes is under good control, that you take your medications, uh, that you're not in decline with things like, again, eye disease or um, that your hands and your, your feet, your extremities are in good working condition. And when you bring that back, as long as all of those line up, as long as your condition is stable, you're taking your medications, you haven't had any incidents where you've lost consciousness, where you've passed out, and that you don't have anything progressive, like progressive eye disease, generally I will then clear you to drive. Now, if you've got even one of those issues, if you're not taking your medication regularly, you've passed out recently, you've got progressive eye disease, if, you've, if this thing doesn't check out 100%, I cannot pass you. So this is going to be a disqualified condition, unfortunately. So if you've got diabetes, just make sure it's under control if you're not taking insulin. And if you're taking insulin, probably not a bad idea to download the insulin dependent diabetics form, take it in, get it filled out. And again, if you bring it in and it's got, you know, one of those conditions on it that you've passed out in the past or, or your condition is unstable, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to pass the DOT physical. All right. And number two on this list is blood pressure issues. Blood pressure issues is something that the FMCSA has pretty clear standards on, and we follow here in our office the standards pretty closely. Um, if you've got blood pressure issues, again, does not mean that you cannot pass the DOT physical. You just want to make sure that your blood pressure is under control, either through diet or exercise, um, any other natural means that you might have, or medical means that you're taking your medication, either if, even if that's one, two, or three medications, it doesn't matter. We just need to see good numbers so we know your blood pressure is under control when you come in to get your DOT physical done. Now, what are the numbers? Again, I've done a complete blood pressure video. I'm not gonna rehash everything here, but basically if your numbers are over 180, the top number, and over 110, either one of those, if it's 180 or above, or it's 110 and above, we're not gonna be able to certify you. Now, I will do everything in my power to try to get your blood pressure numbers down while you're in the office. Some people just have white coat syndrome. They just get nervous because you're in. 
uh, doctor's office, they're taking your blood pressure. So, you know, mentally you kind of get a little bit nervous and that can raise your blood pressure or you're nervous because, you know, your job's at stake when you come in and get these DOT physicals done, unfortunately. So we get that. I get that. Um, so I will take your blood pressure multiple times. I'll let you go to the bathroom and do the urinalysis part first because sometimes that can uh, lower your blood pressure. I'll even let you lay down on one of our nice uh, comfy tables, turn the light off, put some music on for you, let everything kind of calm down. I'll do everything I can to calm you down. But if after all of our efforts, we are not able to get your blood pressure under that 180 uh, over 110 number, we're not going to be able to certify you. That is disqualifying. Now, if you fall under that, if you come down lower than that, but you're still too high, we might be able to then certify you for a three-month card so you can go in and get your medication either adjusted or get on medication or do whatever it takes to get your blood pressure down into a normal range. Or maybe a year we can give you a medical card. But if it's over that 180, over 110, and we just can't get it down, that is dangerous. You are at risk to have a stroke and potentially on the road, crash a very large vehicle cause a catastrophic event and we won't be able to certify you. So that's number two, a real biggie on this list. All right, number three, and this is one that I cover a lot on this channel because there's a lot of interest on it, in it and there's a lot of confusion about it. And the fact of the matter is as of the posting of this video and I will make update videos as this changes because it is changing and I and coming down the line some big changes I think are happening with this particular subject so definitely stay subscribed here when those updates come out I will let you know but marijuana usage I will have drivers unfortunately come in and marijuana you can get in Ohio with a prescription medical marijuana is legal but in some parts of the country it is fully recreational recreationally legal you can just get it at the store so even in those states, the FMCSA controls the Department of Transportation physical, so it is federally illegal. Let me say that again. Marijuana is still federally illegal as of the posting of this video, and if you write down on your intake paperwork that even occasionally you smoke marijuana or do some edibles or anything like that, that is an automatic disqualification. We cannot pass you, you could be 100% healthy and you write down or you put a check mark in uh, the I've used illegal substances and write down every once in a while smoke marijuana or smoked marijuana a couple weeks ago with a friend or whatever it is. If you write marijuana usage down, you're disqualified. You cannot pass the Department of Transportation Physical because it is federally illegal and the federal government controls the DOT, the Department of Transportation Physical. I don't know if I can make that any more clear. Please quit using marijuana before coming in to do your DOT physical because we cannot pass you if you are using. Now, here is a little bit more confusion. During the DOT physical, we will not be drug testing you. The urinalysis does not test you for drugs. It tests you for health conditions, blood in your urine, diabetes, things like that. So we're not gonna be drug testing you now, potentially a drug test can go along with the Department of Transportation, but they're separate and you would be informed that you're getting a drug test as well. If you just go in to get your DOT physical done, there is no drug test that goes along with it. But if you write in your paperwork that you use marijuana, you're disqualified, unfortunately. And the last thing that I'll mention in this video, and again, this video isn't a complete list of everything that may potentially disqualify you when you're going in to get your DOT physical done, but these are really the biggies that I see, is a history of having seizures or a diagnosis of epilepsy. It is going to be very difficult. Now, not impossible uh, if you haven't had a seizure in a very, very long time or if it was an unprovoked seizure, potentially we are going to be able to certify you. So getting a CDL or getting your medical card from the Department of Transportation passing your DOT physical is not an impossibility if you've ever had a seizure, but having a diagnosis of epilepsy and having a history of seizures, it's going to be difficult to pass the DOT physical, even again if your health is 100% across the board in every other way. And I've seen this unfortunately in the past. So when you go in to get your DOT, DOT physical done. If you've had a history of seizures, let them know, um, be as honest as you can, but this may be one of the things as well that can be disqualifying, unfortunately. All right, so again, those are the biggies. Again, in my opinion, 
Um, it isn't all that difficult to pass the DOT physical, and I'll prove it with this stat. Now, again, this just includes my office, but this is the percentage that I've passed versus the percentage that I have not passed over the past 12 months, the past year. So of all the drivers that I've seen, I have passed 93% of the drivers that have come into my office. So there's a 93% pass rate, which is, I think, pretty high. 7%, unfortunately, for one reason or another, some of which I listed, just cannot be certified. They're dangerous to be on the road in the FMCSA, in my opinion, we just cannot certify them. There's a reason for the DOT physical. It's not just a hoop to jump through. It's not just another tax or another charge. We are trying to make sure that there's not people on the road that potentially could cause a catastrophic, life-threatening incident. So, But 93% is pretty high. So when you go in, if you don't have one of those conditions that I mentioned or anything else, again, that would either cause you to not be able to operate a motor vehicle safely or make you pass out at any random time, you're probably going to be able to pass the DOT physical. All right, I hope that was very, very helpful, drivers. And until next time, stay safe.